Hello and welcome to Digital Stratosphere, the podcast that provides independent and technology agnostic advice to help organizations going through their digital transformation journeys. My name is Kyler Cheatham and I am your host today. With the spirit of Thanksgiving, in today's episode, we are discussing things that you can be thankful or grateful for within your digital transformation project. And joining me for today's conversation is Khalid Morris, one of our directors of strategy and transformation here at Third Stage. So welcome, Khalid. Hi, how are you? We're great. We're great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we are about to celebrate Thanksgiving here in the U.S. And as we go into our holiday season, we thought we would look at some of the positive of digital transformation or things that we can you know, look forward to. Because a lot of times when we discuss this, it can be kind of scary. And we talk a lot about failures and those types of things. Um, so today we're going to you know, put a little bit of a positive spin on it. So just to start, how can a new technology positively transform a business, Khalid? A new technology can transform a business in Lord so many ways. <laughs> it's, um, uh, but but the, the best way to think about it is uh, really through the processes. Um, a lot of the time, uh, technology supports the existing processes of a business. So once you change the technology, your whole process, um, all your processes in, within your organization shift with that. And uh, it gives you the opportunity to recreate uh, processes in a more efficient way, or, you know, and uh, to not necessarily do some of the same things that uh, maybe uh, have caused you problems in the past. So um, I, I would say the first thing is um, processes. I think that's the, the, the main driver. You can have more efficient processes with a technology shift. Absolutely. And that kind of enables a new technology to come in and, and optimize that process. So when we're talking about business processes or overall strategies, is that something that can be seen as an opportunity for a business when they might be in implementing a new technology to take, kind of take a step back and look at their overall digital strategy from more of a holistic point of view? Yeah, not, not only should it be looked at as an opportunity, uh, I think business cases should be created around it. I think you can treat um, uh, technology projects as capital investments. Uh, so you can create a initial investment around it and kind of measure ROI um, over the course of a five or, or, or 10 year increment. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it, it can definitely be looked at as an opportunity. And I think that um, um, just in, in the very beginning that you should create a business case around it that drives value and stay true to that case um, through the life of um, the technology. And when we talk about driving value, what exactly does that mean? What type of value can a technology transformation or a new software bring to a business? Well, the, I guess one easy way to think about it is scale. Um, you know, a given business, if you think about your inventory, your inventory and uh, logistics operational uh, systems can only do so much. Uh, maybe a maybe they can produce 100 un units uh, per week, uh, for example. Uh, once you install technology, the idea is that now I can actually do more uh, with that. I can actually run more more units. I can actually, because maybe my processes are faster, I can get more inventory through the door quicker and into uh, uh, whether it's retail or distributive environments uh, faster and accept more inventory as a result. So maybe your output drives can change from uh, 100 units to 200 units, or it can double or triple. Uh, so scale is a huge piece of why a lot of businesses choose to uh, change their technology. Uh, they wanna be able to do more, uh, not even necessarily by uh, reducing staff or uh, increasing staff, right? But just by um, having more technology tools, uh, they can sort of drive and scale and create new growth plans to say, now we can attack maybe the East Coast or the West Coast, or, or maybe even go global uh, because they have technology to help support it and allow their um, operational systems to sort of do more and become more efficient. It sounds like that could definitely lead to an increase in revenue or overall ROI or business Absolutely. value 
as well. Um, so scaling for growth, obviously so important. Um, we talk a lot about failures, um, mm -hmm. ERP failures, and kind of what lessons we can garner from those projects for our clients or our community here at Digital Stratosphere. Do you think that you can kind of flip it for us and share more of a success story um, on the digital transformation side within your experience? Yeah, there, there, there are several successes and most are successes. I think that, you know, a lot of times, like with anything else, the, the bad guys get all of the the, the, the attention. So, uh, you know, it's easy to, I, I know of a few failures um, that have happened, particularly uh, when we're doing like expert testimony and you get, mm -hmm. get a chance to see the ugly side of what happens when everything goes south. Um, but the vast majority of cases certainly that I've worked on or I've been a part of have been successes. And um, I think the success is more normal than the, than the failure. Um, uh, and I think it really starts with collaboration. Uh, when you have a project and, and, and everyone's kind of collaborating and, and working in concert and working together, I like to think of it as pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, when that happens, I think that, that you're, I think you realize success a little bit different, especially if your plans are aligned to success or having a successful outcome and everyone's pulling in that direction. I think that's ultimately where you get. So um, in my experience, I can point to a, a number of different clients that kind of have had that experience. I don't know if it's fair to call them all out by name <laughs> or company. I, I don't know if that'll be the right thing to do, uh, but I will say it's it's more normal for, for uh, me to be a part of a win, a success at the end where you not only have the implementation, but uh, you have a, um, a, a set of workers that understand how they're going to use it and they have adoption and they have, I think, um, uh, drivers that sort of lead more to realizing the benefits associated with implementing the software in the first place. Absolutely. And when we, we talk about that end user adoption or those strategies and making sure that we are utilizing the new technology the way that we want to within organizations, um, is that seems like something that would be a main measurement of success. Um, and then, you know, a, a a place in which we could maybe mine some gratitude out of from thanking our teams for uh, going through that process, but also, you know, taking a chance on a new system, which is always something that, you know, can be a little scary. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 it can be. Um, but I think that's part of I mean, a lot of the times and I even just recently on the, on a client that I'm working with now, um, one of the things that they said that resonated is we don't know, we don't know. And I think that's a common theme for uh, a lot of people that are going through ERP. It's a scary process. They don't necessarily know what they don't know. They don't have a bunch of full cycles. They know their business. They don't necessarily know what it's like to sort of lose um, the processes that they've become so familiar with. They might have been, in some cases, working on things for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they're the subject matter expert. They are the go-to person. Everyone in the organization goes to uh, there's one individual for how do I do this in the system or how do I do that or you know can you help me with this or that and then all of a sudden that's taken away um, all the familiarity is lost and it's a scary thought it's a scary feeling no one wants to relearn things I happen to have to relearn things all the time in my field right new technology is like you know I have to go re go go back to the starting mm -hmm. starting point to 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 relearn things I'm very comfortable with that but everyone isn't and 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 I get that and it and it is extremely scary but it doesn't have to be. I just think it, it's it's once you've done it a bunch of different times, you understand that it is a process. And to master a technology, all you have to do is work in it and and uh, do your reading and kind of kind of do those little things, and, and you kind of can become very familiar with it very very quickly. Um, uh, it's just that I, I I think that there's a resistance that happens on the employee side, and those walls kind of have to come down, kind of like when you're in a new social environment and you're kind of scared of everyone around you, you know, sometimes you got to let your guard down to just kind of introduce yourself and meet and network and, and do those things to sort of see uh, the people around you and, and kind of let them get introduced to you. I think it's the same way with technology. You just have to let your, your guard down and just jump in just, just two feet, just, just, just dive in, right. Even if the water's cold, you just 
go head first and just get used to it really quickly. And then all of a sudden uh, it's normal and it's back to normal. And those same people that were the leaders before are typically the leaders again, because um, you know, they're, they're, they're familiar with the business side, right? Technology supports the business. It's not really the other way around, right? It's not like technology leads the business. It's really the business that leads. So once you understand how the business works, um, you just really want to see how the technology is supporting that. Then, then that's how uh, you kind of get familiar with, um, with the technology really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love all those ana analogies. You know, digital transformation can be like making friends, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice way to think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So when you do have that that subject matter expert or that tribal knowledge within your organization that could be more of a reactive or cowboy type of culture. And you're going through this transformation where you're trying to um, document and shift those processes. How do you say thank you to that employee or that person that has helped your business grow to this point while still not making them feel like you might be taking away that really important value? Well, I, I, I would think, I don't know if thank you is the right word for me. I would think of it as uh, when you're implementing software, an important part of that is change management, mm -hmm. uh, how your organization deals with change. And you want to know where the resistance is. I don't know if it's fair to say that that, you know, super SME user um, on the old system uh, will be resistant to the new system, they may very well be opening the door and be, you know, be, be that person that wants to jump in head first, or they could be that resistance points that's just sort of leading the charge with, I don't know if this is gonna be the right thing, not just for their career, but they could be saying it for uh, the organization as a whole. And I, I think that it's important when you're implementing software to identify uh, where those resistance areas are and really try to get a sense of why, right? Like what's the real driver there? Cause that's the heart of, of what's going to kind of lead to the right benefit, the right absorb uh, adoption kind of on the um, on the tail end. So uh, you, you, you get there, you ask those questions, you try to see like, okay, if you're nervous, why are you nervous? Kind of what do you need? Do you need more training? Kind of you need more support? Is it the resources? Like, what is it that's driving your hesitation? What is it that's driving your fears? And then support that as the organization through your implementation plan, through your training, through your modeling, just make sure that you have it. Well, I just need a couple more reps. I need more practice with it, you know, and then you, you, you provide that sandbox environment. You give them those tools. You say, I want to be able to do these things before I go live with it. Okay, well, let's, let's make sure you have those scenarios in place. Let's test and make sure that you can go through each and every single one of those um, uh, scenarios prior to going live, just because uh, it'll make you more comfortable. And kind of once you do that, you start to kind of knock down those, those, those uh, walls of resistance. And then you kind of get that kind of everyone's kind of ready and, and excited about kind of moving forward with it because they're no longer kind of scared of it, right? So, so for me, I think of it as a change issue. And I think that's normal. I don't think that's, that's abnormal at all. I just think you need you just need to make sure that you have a proper change strategy uh, within your implementation plan. And um, a lot of the times that doesn't get done, certainly to the tune that it needs to get done. I, I think every implementation plan that I've, um, every implementation project that I've been on has always had a training component. I don't think you can, you can't do this without a training component. Just because you have a training component doesn't mean you've identified within your organization where those areas of concerns are, where those pockets of resistance are, where those workers are really nervous about it and where you're gonna have a hard time pushing this software system. So you have to identify those areas first, you create your training plan second, and then you have your communication strategies and likes that sort of move to support that so that uh, those areas of the uh, organization feel adequately supported by um, uh, through the course of you know, the implementation. Well, those are all really great insights, Khalid. And um, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'd love to dive deeper into that company culture and organizational change management component. If 
you are involved in any sort of digital transformation or business change initiative, you will want to download the 2021 Digital Transformation Report. With its comprehensive overview of business and technology trends and best practices, this report is a must-have guide for any transformation project or executive team. Download this free report by visiting Third Stage Consulting at thirdstage-consulting.com. You can also visit our website to learn more about us or download independent reports, videos, and other best practices. Again, visit thirdstage-consulting.com today to learn how to take your transformation to the third stage of success. Welcome back to Digital Stratosphere, the podcast. I'm Kyler Cheatham speaking with Khalid Morris from Third Stage Consulting Group about all of the things that you can be grateful for during a digital transformation in celebration of the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. So Khalid, let's jump back in. Before the break, we had kind of touched on the importance of an organizational change plan within your overall digital transformation, um, digital transformation strategy, excuse me. Mm. I wanted to to kind of dig into company culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. Does there need to be a cultural component to digital transformation projects that should be considered? Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that when I think of company culture, I think of it in layers. You have an overarching company culture, whatever that is, right? You guys might be suit and tie, buttoned up, everybody's kind of stiff, you know, you got some organizations that, you know, walk around with pajamas. And and, and I, I quite literally mean they, you know, I've been at companies where the culture was people show up with pajamas. And obviously, that culture is a lot looser than, um, you know, going to be the, you know, suit and tie kind of kind of crowd there, uh, Brooks Brothers crowd there, <laughs> right? So you, you, you have kind of this overarching culture that kind of you know, has its tentacles and everything that you do. But in every organization, you have subculture. And I think that's at the heart of an implementation project is what is the subculture that's being built? And a lot of the times you do have latitude there with um, how that's being done. That's why you want to identify those pockets of resistance. You want to brand the project a certain way. Uh, branding is, you know, you know brands are in, in, in business within, you know, for these kinds of things can almost be like politics, right? Like if you, if you don't get in front of it, if you don't define for yourself the messaging and get control of that, mm -hmm. you can kind of get shaped and defined uh, in the process. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want your, your implementation project to fall to, you know, water cooler conversation not because the water cooler conversations are bad right the water cooler conversations could be great it, they could be branding your project great uh, but it could go south and, and once it goes south it's much much harder to get everybody on the same page right so you want to get in front of it you want to start to create a subculture within the project that is positive and and that's pushing in the right direction that has excitement right i think that uh, you you, you want to be excited about these things, even though they're hard and nobody wants to be excited about hard things. I think the net benefit, uh, the, the, the final destination is something worthy of being excited about. When you think of some people's jobs getting easier, when you think about the business doing better, when you think about all of those kinds of things, um, there's enough there to kind of be excited. And so I think when you focus on the positive parts of a, 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 of a software, a technology, whatever, your, whatever component of your digital strategy is sort of being implemented, um, that's the parts that you can brand and you can push in a subculture um, that, uh, that, that is truly excited about implementing this digital strategy and moving into a new age, a new era, if you will, of, um, for the organization. And, and, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about, you know, but, but I would encourage you to like do logos, like go, go for it, create new messaging, new, new uh, posters, kind of, kind of go, go, go create a whole thing around. This is what our organization is doing. And we're really excited about it. And that can have legs. And I think that can positively in, impact uh, your project and kind of let people kind of take those guards down and say, oh, it's not so bad. I think it'll be good. And blah, blah, blah. And you kind of start to shape those water cooler conversations, especially if they feel included and brought into the process in addition to that messaging. So, so yeah. When it comes to influencing that narrative in a positive way or kind of showcasing the opportunity to your business community, what are some of the best ways that you've seen that happen for these types of projects? 
I, I think it goes back to the benefit realization conversation we're having in the, in the beginning uh, and thinking about this from a business case perspective, right? When you outline that and you kind of define early, uh, yes, it's going to cost, but we're going to have a net benefit over the course of five to 10 years. Something drives that net benefit, right? That net benefit could be, that case could be built on uh, a, a set of savings, uh, whether it's the efficiency as a part of your business process or, you know, allow you to kind of open up and do a, a new revenue line or support a new revenue line, or if it's allow you to just kind of scale into new growth or whatever those pieces are. I think you start with those as your, as your net benefit and really kind of harp on this is why we're doing it, right? A lot of the times, um, even at the SME level, uh, at that kind of employee level, uh, they, they get lost in the facts, right? Like, because they're not presented with why we're doing certain things. They're just sort of, you know, almost told like, oh, this is what we're doing. And then when they, they go about it, they, 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 they do it. It's their job to kind of do that, but they don't really see the full vision. And I think that it's important for everyone in your organization to kind of see that so that they understand, okay, this is why we're doing this. This makes sense to me, right? We want to be able to scale and get into new opportunities and to be able to, to, uh, to go global instead of kind of staying in our regional sort of space or whatever, that sort of thing. And, and then if they can make that pairing between uh, them doing that and this technology that's supporting them and that sort of being the catalyst for that, I think that's noteworthy of them being excited. Like, okay, my job is gonna expand. I'm gonna be able to do more things as a result of this. And, 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 and I think that's the association that happens. But it's cool that you can have happy messaging and, you know, this is a new day and this is a new era and all of that and, 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 and all of that's fine. But I think at the at the end of the day, people want uh, messaging that's tied to the facts. And, and I think when you have that up front and you understand why we're making this investment up front, and then you kind of can lead with those things. And then you can have your messaging that kind of supports that. And, and then people can understand it. It is a new day. We are going to be able to do something different that we weren't able to kind of do before. Um, but you kind of need both uh, to kind of work in concert with each other so that uh, it can kind of resonate with throughout your organization. Absolutely. <laughs> that, you know, transparency we've learned from, you know, many different projects is so important. Um, I'm, I'm curious when, when you have a client that might be on the fence about a digital transformation, how do you make them feel confident or how would you make a team, a project team feel confident in going through what could potentially be a very expensive investment and a disruption to their business, but there's, you know, there's successes on the other side. How do you help them see that? Well, there's, you know, it, it, that's, that's can be tough because if someone is on the fence about it, then obviously there's, there's some potential concerns that they have, right? So I think you got to get to the heart of those concerns uh -huh. to kind of see what's really driving your fears, right? Because it, it, it may be that they don't really believe in the technology or the components of soft and technologies that are sort of coming in. Uh, it may be that um, uh, they, they question the case, the value case for, for why you're making this investment in the first place. I mean, it may be a host of different reasons. So I think you got to get to the heart of, of, of where that hesitation is kind of coming from and kind of get to, does this make sense, right? Because the right fit when you're, when you're in a situation where uh, you're making an investment into a, a set of technologies for your digital strategy, the right fit should excite you. It, should, it shouldn't be something that you're, you shouldn't, you shouldn't like walk into spending uh, for a digital strategy, like, and be concerned about it, like, oh, I don't want to do this, right? Because then that hesitation translates into those change impacts, right? Like, you now are, are, you are part of that change impact, right? You are part of that organizational change uh, uh, space where we're trying to identify where the resistance is. You, you don't want to be part of the resistance. You want to be part of, of the excitement and the expansion into those spaces. So I think it's very important to identify that and get rid of it everywhere, right? Say, okay, if you guys aren't comfortable with this and I'm not comfortable with this, kind of let's, let's all get comfortable with this. So where are the spaces that you're still bothered by all of this and really attack those spaces? Uh, so I would first encourage that to happen, right? Second, after kind of we, we, we kind of get past that and kind of identify, I think that uh, you really have to put your finger on, and I can't emphasize this enough, uh, the drivers, right? Uh, part of what, uh, we try to do in in uh, one of the the messages that we sell in um, in in our space is that we're trying to get to the third stage. <laughs> like that's our 
That's our whole thing is, and part of that third stage is the benefit realization part. And when we get to a space where we understand where those benefits are, right? That's going to be our messaging. That's going to be our drivers. That's going to be where we're selling this thing, not just to the executive team. I think to, you know, as I kind of just articulated, it should also translate down low, um, but that's going to be the point that we have to make to the executive team and they have to buy in on that. And if they don't necessarily buy in, then, then they shouldn't necessarily make that investment. They should be able to see on that third stage and see that once this thing is implemented, we're going to be able to realize these benefits over time. Uh, that is why you make a value uh, investment. I, I, I get, I kind of am going through a project now where uh, there's a, uh, uh, they're making the case where they want to do the investment because their software is being decommissioned. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're, we're being decommissioned in that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of easier and harder to make a true value case on that in terms of benefits realization there, because a lot of the times they're, they're comfortable with their kind of older software that's being decommissioned that, you know, maybe Microsoft is no longer using anymore or whatever the, 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 the company is. They kind of issued that letter to them and said, hey, guys, I, well, you guys have been on this for a very long time and, and, and we're, we're pulling the plug on it. Like I, I, I get that that's a reason to make a technology shift, but there's more opportunity than just, I mean, it's, it's more opportunity in making a digital transition or, or transformation mm -hmm. um, than just uh, our software is no longer kind of being there. I think you need to sort of identify, these are all the cases from a process perspective, from a um, savings kind of pr pr perspective within your operational systems, from your HR systems, from your integration systems, from your um, the cost savings of kind of going to the cloud instead of necessarily sort of sort of living in an on-prem kind of space, what the migration is like and what the benefits of that's going to be like, um, the you know not having to deal with as much hardware and maintenance costs. You have to factor all of that in and kind of make that case to say, no, this is a great thing for the organization. It's not a average thing for the or it's not a small thing this is what this is what's great for our organization and we are we are tailoring this technology change to exactly what our organization has to do in comparison to what other organizations are doing right it's not a trend that we're just doing because because our competitors are doing it we're, we're making the best technology case we can for what we do in the marketplace sounds like being very intentional and aligned within that strategy is in, is Critical. extremely important it, it's critical and you have to align that technology with, and this is to me at, at a core of getting to what digital strategy is, you have to align your technology to what your business goals and objectives are, um, right? So if you're trying to, for example, um, go through a product line uh, and, you know, and and, and at your, your core competency is products, for example. And uh, you know, in three years, you want to do service. You're going to have a service component to that particular product piece. Uh, we got to make sure our technology kind of supports that. We got to make sure our technology you know, supports that in ways that makes our business unique and special. And, and I think that once you start to align your, your business strategy with all of the things you want to do, on the technical side, that's when your digital strategy starts to expand and explode in ways that um, maybe you didn't imagine or, or envision kind of kind of initially, right? You, you need your technology drivers to sort of support that. So when I think of what digital strategy is, I think about it at that business, at that executive level, those, those business goals, those business objectives, that roadmap, uh, product roadmap, the, the kind of, uh, you, you know, all of those business roadmaps that, that um, outline what the business is trying to do, right? And then the technology kind of coming in to kind of support um, what those objectives are and understanding that maybe your current technology doesn't do all that, right? And saying that we want to align kind of new technology, whether it's at a third party level, or maybe it's at a core ERP kind of level, kind of have those pieces all supported, right? Or maybe it's an integration issue and just kind of having tighter integration so that your, your, your data components are talking uh, to each other. Whatever it is, it really is driven off the fact that the business is being led at that executive level, those business goal level, and then you kind of have the technology kind of supporting that. Excellent. Well, that's such great insight and, and so important. Um, I'm curious, Khalid, what are you most thankful for in being a mm -hmm. digital digital transformation executive? Um, I'm, you know, I, I really like like doing this. I like helping people through um, their 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 kind of 
of questions and uh, their digital strategy kind of overall. Um, it's, it's, I like the technology space. I consider myself a technologist. I kind of read up on all kind of new stuff that they're doing in the software space as it relates to sort of business. So to be able to share that and kind of work with people through, you know, all of their quirky visions and, uh, you know, things that they're trying to do for the organization to kind of make themselves differentiated or unique is a joy for me. So I'm thankful to be able to do that. Excellent. Well, we are extremely grateful for all your amazing insight and your time today. Um, so happy Thanksgiving to you and your family as well. Um, this is Digital Stratosphere. We put out new episodes every Wednesday. If you would like to talk with Khalid further about digital strategy, his contact information is below in the description. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and we will see you next week. All right. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you too.